any chance I get when I show you an off-road vehicle, I always want to show you the wheel articulation. And check that out. That looks so sick. Look at the back. That is what you call wheel articulation. In the comment section, what other truck does it better than the Gladiator in the midsize segment? And here's the front. So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a 2021 Jeep Gladiator. Now this is going to have a high altitude package. This is the most expensive Jeep Gladiator that you can buy right now. And it's new for 2021 and I can't wait to show you guys around it. So let's get started. As mentioned, this is going to be a 2021 Gladiator high altitude four wheel drive. Now base price is going to look differently on the window sticker because when you add the high altitude package that's going to actually be like a trim level so it's not really a package but it is showing as a package on the window sticker so it's kind of confusing. But this was painted with a bright white clear coat. There is actually a nice red color. It looks like it's going to be new for 2021. Um, be sure to put it on the video here. And it's going to have the black interior. 3.6 is going to be the engine. And it has an a speed transmission and then here's a quick listing of all of your standard equipment it does have those dana axles 373 axle is going to be standard and a few other things seven inch display and you have apple carplay and google android auto so here's the high altitude package so everything that you see under here is going to basically come standard up here it's going to continue And then as you guys can see, this does have the trailer tow package. It gives you that class for receiving hitch, trailer hitch zoom. And one thing I would mention, it doesn't say it on here, but you do have heavy duty engine cooling too. Cold weather group, have those heated front seats and steering wheel, remote start and all weather slush mats. And it's just gonna have that eight speed transmission that is gonna come uh, as an option. A manual transmission is standard and track lock anti-spin rear differential is 595. Destination comes in at 1495 with a total price of $55,100. And then here's some of your fuel economy numbers here. In the comments section, let me know what you guys think about this package. I really do like the painted bumpers, fender flares, door handles, mirrors. I mean, everything looks really good. And it does look even nicer with the high gloss accents on the bumpers too. And also on the grill. It's a little dirty, but there's some high gloss black accents. And I really like the way this looks, even with the black emblems on the side too. It looks like a luxury Jeep truck. Kind of like how the G-Wagon looks, but it has that same look to it, especially with these black wheels. I really like the way it looks. If you're not familiar, this does have the V6. Let's go ahead and pop the hood so you guys can see this engine and I'll let you guys know what the power numbers are. All right, so just like that, you have two straps on the side and you do have a hook that you have to push to the right like this. And that way you can take a look at your 3.6 liter V6 Pinastar. Now this is gonna be good for 285 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque. And if you don't think this is enough power, you do have a three liter diesel option available for 2021. Now that's gonna have 260 horsepower, which is not a lot if you think about it, but it's gonna have 442 pound feet of torque. Now the diesel engine will not tow more than the gas. So just keep that in mind. So this is gonna give you max tow and it should give you max payload also because I'm assuming that three liter diesel is gonna weigh a little bit more than this. And my opinion is you're going to pay a little bit more maintenance for that diesel also. So just keep that in mind. Before we move on, I have to show you the headlights. So I'm going to turn everything on for you guys. Now this is going to be LED headlights, fog lights. You do have turn signals that are going to be LED. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So these are going to be your daytime running lights. You also have a accent light around the headlight too. And this is going to be your low beam headlights. They are going to be projector LED. 
and it looks like your daytime running lights do dim down a little bit. And then this is going to be for your LED fog lights. You're also going to have LED turn signals. And your high beam is going to be a part of your projector also. All right guys, so we're going to take this Gladiator on a quick drive. This is my second time whew, driving a Gladiator. And the first time I drove one, I was not impressed. I mean, this thing is definitely loud. It handles like a truck, which this is to be expected, but it's just not something that I would drive on long trips all the time. So let me just go ahead and get on the road here and I'll see you in a second. Now, as I mentioned, that high altitude is going to give you that painted bumpers, fender flares, mirrors. The roof is also painted too. And I do like this wheel design. The only thing I wish that you could do was maybe add a more aggressive tire. I think this thing would look so much better with a lift and a more aggressive tire. That's really it. And because this is like considered a luxury Jeep, they probably should offer power running boards too. I think that would really help finish it off. As far as fuel goes, this is gonna be a 22 gallon tank. If you opt to get the diesel, it would be a 19 gallon. Of course, you're going to have disc brakes front and rear. It's going to have a coil sprung suspension. Now, out back, as you guys saw on the window sticker, you do have a class 4 receiving hitch. You also have a 4 pin and a 7 pin connection for your trailer. I would definitely strongly opt to get a trailer brake. I wish more dealerships would add that on as an option just because this is a pickup truck, and I know at some point someone's probably going to tow a trailer with this thing. You can notice you have a backup camera and I like your blacked out Jeep emblems too. Really nice tail light design. They do integrate the parking sensors on the back of the bumper. Now let's go ahead and drop your tailgate. It is assisted. And if you are carrying something in the bed, you can actually allow the bed to kind of have somewhat of a tilt to it, as you just saw. There is a spray and bed liner option and you can get a plug back here too. You have your LED lights. And there's a little goose egg there. I believe that's the area code where, there, where this was built at. You have a small rear glass that opens. Only thing I would like to see is a lift. Hopefully in time we'll see some people lift these and put some more aggressive tires. I actually don't mind these wheels. However, I'm pretty sure they're probably like a 20 by eight. So you probably can't get that big of a tire in, in terms of width on it. But yeah, I'm sure you can get 35s on this though, for sure. If you've never driven a Gladiator, just be prepared. This thing is loud. It's not that comfortable. And it's loud. Like the steering is very vague. Like I feel like the steering is just clumsy. Oh my goodness, terrible. But all things aren't bad. I mean, this thing is probably a beast off road. We have great ground clearance, but I'm gonna get up to about 80 miles an hour. Power, power's not bad. It has decent power, but the wind noise, it's windy today. So that's, if you're hearing that, it's a lot of wind. It's very loud. Now, if I turn the music on, let's see what we got here. Media. Series XM. Oh, yeah, that's better. That's better. But if you're just like me, sometimes I like to drive in complete silence. This would be annoying. Wow. Because this is the high altitude, you can tell that Jeep definitely tried to add some cues to the interior. They have this caramel stitching pretty much everywhere inside of here. It's on the steering wheel, it's on your shifters, on your e-brake, it's on the dash. And I love the way it looks on these seats. I mean, that looks so classy. In the comment section, let me know what you guys think about this. It looks really nice. Now, as far as getting in inside of a Jeep, it's not hard, it's not easy, it's just a task. Cause it's kind of like getting inside of a supercar. You have to put your foot in first and then you kind of have to step into it. So. 
And as far as this interior goes, this is what they've had since what 2018 in the Wrangler. So there's not much difference between the two. The only way you know you're in a truck is when you look out back and you kind of see where that roof cuts off at there. But overall, removable roof and a lot of nice features. I mean, this has blind spot monitoring, cross path detection, and heated seats, dual climate control. There's just so much about this thing that makes it upscale and definitely user friendly. I don't know if I would drive this though every day. I think I would probably choose maybe this as a weekend car or like a car they'll use for like trips to go to the beach. On the door, you can control the mirrors, your door locks, and this is how you would control your headlights. You do have automatic headlights, and this is how you would control your interior lighting too for the Gladiator. You are gonna have manual seats though, so you have to, if you wanna go up, or down with a seat it's all manual so there's no way to get an optional power seat inside of this and that's a good thing too I mean if you're planning on going off-road and fording a, a river you don't want power seats that's why they have a lot of the controls high up too because of that same reason but telescoping steering wheel there's a lever right here and it goes in and out up and down it doesn't come out that much to just note that auto dimming mirror check out your animation for your screen and it gives you the sweep for the gauges and a lot of information inside of here I'm not gonna take too much time to go through all this but things are pretty much the same as you can see your drivetrain you can see your pitch and roll and it shows just some of your information like your battery voltage tire pressure, coolant temp, transmission temp, oil temperature, oil pressure, and then back to our oil life. And on this side, you do have a seven inch screen. And one thing I like about Chrysler's products is that you can customize this screen. So for example, if you want like your auto dimming mirror, you can swipe it down just like that. You do have navigation. And as far as your radio goes, XM radio, as you guys saw, you can customize this also. So if you don't want something to be here, oop, I'm really quick, unfortunately. So here we go. Watch. You hold it down and then you slide it over and you can change things inside of here. You can do your USBs. So if you prefer to have your USBs out here, you can get rid of the FM if you don't listen to it. As far as controls go, you can go in here and see your mirror controls heated steering wheel and heated seats, settings. There's so many ways you can customize this system too. And let's just go to display so you can see what I'm talking about. So if you wanna turn off that annoying beep, you can definitely do that. You can set the theme. They have different things that you can choose from. Let's see if you can see a difference. Yeah, and that way you kinda of get a feel for how you can customize this. But there's so many different things I could show you, but it would take too much time, so we have to move on. And you do have storage up top too, look at that. And even though you have controls inside the screen for your climate, they still give you your heated seats, your climate control outside. So you don't have to necessarily go inside of the screen to control that. And that's a good touch because a lot of manufacturers are starting to get away from giving you these buttons. I mean, it's gonna save money overall, but a lot of manufacturers understand that some people prefer this. And I, I'm hoping that they continue to do this for more cars, at least the cars that I buy. Now you do have auto down on these windows, but you don't have auto up on any of them. I've never seen that before. Only, even for the driver's side, you have to hold it to go up. So that's pretty interesting, but you do have auto down. They do give you some of your USBs. You have a type A and a type C auxiliary, and then you have a 12 volt DC. This is how you would control your full drive system. And this is your gear shifter. Has a little picture of a Jeep Gladiator, cup holders, and a spot here for a phone, basically too. Very small center console. This is your top one, and then you have one just below with an additional USB. On this side, you guys can tell you have a speaker on the side, and the same thing goes on the driver's side too. And they give you a kind of a small uh, glove box too. 
notice how you have no lights up front and the reason why that is is because right here they give you all of the lights so I'm gonna turn them on for you now these are gonna be LED lights and the ones on the side do come on individually but the one in the middle comes on if you were to open the door alongside of the other four lights too out back they do give you the caramel stitching and they continue that design on the rear seats i'd like that they do that some manufacturers will only do it for the front seats but jeep decided to give it to you out back too they want to show your rear occupants how luxurious your gladiator is now getting inside the back is kind of a task not a lot of space now this seat is as far back as it can go but i would need it this far back because i don't feel as comfortable inside of this because it's kind of small but they do give you some air vents controls for the rear windows cup holders just below and you do have a power outlet with two more usbs right here pretty cool and they're under a really nice cover and I, correct me it's actually four usbs Type A and Type C. And as you guys can see up top, they give you some speakers. They give you some headrests that can be adjusted. And they give you two cup holders in the center seat. Now these seats do fold flat. And you can adjust these headrests. And there is storage behind the seat. And if you lift the seat up, you have storage just below too. And this is just the other side. Additional storage. And I believe this is actually a speaker too, out back. And even a nice touch, they give you LEDs behind the seats. And then this is the other side, under the seat. Really quickly, I wanted to show you guys how I built a Gladiator. One thing I want to point out is, I mentioned that the Gladiator was kind of loud, so I did choose a hardtop headliner. The only issue with this, if you want that option, you have to choose a bed cover, or tunnel cover, whatever you want to call it, and you have to choose a dual top group. So you have to spend $1,100 plus whatever tunnel cover you want for the bed. I don't know why they did that kind of silly in my opinion you can get that spray and bed liner as I mentioned they do have two interior colors this is like a like a grayish color they call it steel gray I don't like it I think this black interior looks better and here's just a few other options that you guys can see on the side Bluetooth speaker have some storage options here for tie downs and all with the floor mats and this is showing that hardtop headliner you can add a few other Mopar options and I did select cold weather group. I did skip these two options. I don't think these are beneficial to me. And auxiliary group, I think if you're getting a Jeep, this is a no brainer. And trailer tow package does give you that heavy duty engine cooling. Even if you don't plan on towing a trailer, I still recommend getting this. It's only 350 bucks. Gives you a bigger alternator, classical receiving hitch comes on there, and then you get an additional camera view. Now you can get that diesel at $4,000 you're going to get better fuel economy but there's a lot more maintenance that goes in with the eco diesel just something you might want to do some research on last but not least if you are planning on towing with the gladiator i would strongly recommend just getting a sport trim level because it's going to give you the highest payload and it's also going to give you a max tow package 410 axle and there's a lot of goodies in this so just keep that in mind i did mention a trailer brake i believe that mopar does make a trailer brake for the Gladiator, it would go in this spot, so just keep that in mind. This is an aftermarket one, it looks like Red Arc, but Mopar does have one too. But again, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.